Hi, in this lecture we are going to study the all pairs shortest paths problem. The input, like before, is a directed graph G with vertices V and edges E, and also a weight function which maps E, the edges, into uh, integer numbers. The output that we want are the shortest paths between all pairs of vertices. So the output length will be quadratic in the number of vertices. There are some obvious uh, approaches for solving this problem. We can, of course, uh, run Dijkstra's algorithm v times. Okay? Remember that Dijkstra, given a source, computes the shortest path to every other node in the graph. So if we run Dijkstra from every possible source, uh, we would solve this problem. This would have time v times the time for Dijkstra, which is an uh, order of v square log v plus ev, and it would require that the weight function is positive. Otherwise, we can also run Bellman for the v times. This allows for arbitrary weight function, and the running time would be order of v square e. These are possible solutions, but are a bit uh, cumbersome. Uh, and next, we're going to see, we're going to give some uh, simpler algorithms uh, which uh, uh, achieve time about um, cubic in the number of vertices uh, for any weight function. The first algorithm that we see is a uh, um, fairly natural dynamic programming approach to this problem. We are going to denote uh, uh, by D superscript M the V by V matrix that contains all the shortest paths of length at most M between any two nodes I and J in the graph. Okay? So again, D superscript M is a V by V matrix, okay? and the IJ entry in this matrix uh, would be the shortest path between uh, I and J. Um, only, however, among the paths which have length at most m. Okay. What we want is uh, d superscript n, the number of nodes, okay, because any shortest path has length at most n, and uh, um, these are our subproblems. And we can give a recursion for this matrix as follows. Um, D superscript M I J, so the shortest path between I and J using at most M edges um, is um, can be obtained by um, going from I to some K uh, using at most M minus one steps and then taking one final edge from K to J. Okay. Uh, which K do we take? The best one. So this would be this would be a recursion of this type. Dij is equal to uh, the minimum over k of uh, d uh, from i to k using only m minus one edges plus the cost for the last edge from k to j. And this includes the case in which uh, k is equal to j, where, for example, the shortest path between i and j uh, only has length m minus 1, uh, because by definition we can set wjj to be 0. Okay. So given this recursion, uh, um, we can compute uh, the matrix d superscript m from the matrix d superscript m minus 1 in time v cube. Okay, so we just run over every possible choice for i and j, that's v squared choice, and for every such choice we run this recursion, which runs in time v, because this k is ranging over all vertices. Okay, so we can compute the next matrix in time v cube, so if you want to get d to the n, so d to, d to the number of vertices, you can do this in time v to the 4. This is a fairly simple approach, but 
um, we can uh, actually uh, speed it up with, with one nice clever idea. The nice and clever idea um, is that if you look at this recursion that we have here, this in fact is just like ordinary matrix multiplication, except that the plus in matrix multiplication is replaced by minimum and the times is replaced by a plus. So if you multiply two matrices, so one entry in the product is the sum of products. Here, one entry in the product would be the minimum of sums. Okay. And the cool thing is that just like matrix multiplication, this operation here is associative. So if you want to obtain D to the number of vertices, which is uh, uh, multiplying by uh, W, the weight function um, V times, uh, what can you do? You can do something like repeated squaring. Okay? You can first uh, compute uh, uh, D superscript 2, which is a W square. Then you can obtain D superscript 4 by squaring uh, D superscript 2. Then you can obtain d, d superscript 8 in a similar fashion by squaring d to the 4. And so in this way, if you want to get all the way to d to the v, what you need is log v iterations. And the overall time now would be just v cube times log v. So this is a fairly um, simple algorithm which gets you time v cube log v. So it's almost v cube and it's relatively simple to implement. However, there exists another algorithm which is even more clever and which gets you uh, just plain v cube running time. And this is known as the uh, floyd warshall algorithm. The floyd warshall algorithm is a more clever dynamic programming algorithm. Before, uh, um, our subproblems were the matrices D superscript M, which were the, um, the shortest paths of length at most M. Okay? The IJ entry in the D superscript M matrix was the length of the shortest path between i and j using at most m edges. Now we are going to change the subproblems in a somewhat unnatural way. Um, we are going to define uh, d superscript m um, from i to j to be the length of the shortest path from i to j such that all the intermediate vertices in this path are at most m. Okay? So I'm allowed uh, to have a straight edge from uh, i to j, but if I want to go through other vertices, uh, some vertex k, then all these vertices have to be at most m, where m is a, the superscript. Okay? So, as our base case, uh, this superscript is zero is what? Then I only allow intermediate vertices uh, to be uh, at most uh, zero. Um, so if you uh, index the vertices starting from one, it means that you cannot use any intermediate vertex. So all you can do is a straight edge from i to j, which means that this superscript zero is nothing but the cost, the weight function, w. Okay, so the ij entry is just the weight of the edge from i to j, which could be infinity if there is no such edge. And now the nice thing is that it's possible to give a, a recursion uh, to compute d to the m from the previous matrices. And um, if you want to pause the video, this is a good time to uh, do that and try to come up with this recursion by yourself. Going ahead, um, we can observe that the recursion has this form. So uh, this superscript m from i to j, well, um, 
if uh, um, m is uh, zero, as we as we remarked before, is just the weight function from i to j. If m is uh, larger than uh, one, then is the minimum of just two things. Okay. So the first term is going from i to j using intermediate vertices uh, at most m minus one. This is clearly a possibility, this. Otherwise, if this is not enough, that means that uh, you are using uh, the uh, vertex m as intermediate vertex, okay? So then I should do, um, I should go from i to m, okay? And um, here I only need intermediate vertices uh, m minus one, okay? I'm allowed to take as final point of the uh, path m. And then from m, I need to go to j, and again, I will only use intermediate vertices, uh, which are at most m minus one. Uh, and that's the whole recursion. And the beauty is that this recursion here is just constant time now. And here is the whole algorithm uh, um, just in uh, pseudocode. We start with the matrix D superscript zero to be just the weight function. And then for M that goes from one to N, for every IJ, we iterate this recursion, which takes constant time. And we return the final matrix. And the time for this uh, is uh, clearly just uh, V cube. Let us give an example uh, of how the floyd walsh algorithm uh, works. Here is a graph. We have uh, uh, five nodes. Um, one, two, three, four, five. We have uh, um, weight uh, weights on the edges. This edge has weight three. This edge here has weight minus four. The weights can be negative. And um, we start with the uh, D superscript zero matrix, which is just the weight function here. So for example, the entry uh, four, uh, two will be the weight uh, from uh, uh, node two, um, sorry, from node four to weight to, uh, to node two. So from four to two, I don't have an edge, so I have an infinity here. Uh, this entry here will be the weight from node one to node three, which is an eight here. So this eight here, this eight here. Uh, let's do another one. This zero here is the weight from three to three. So there is no edge here, but if you, the weight to go from a node to itself is zero. So you have zeros on the diagonal. Uh, let's do another one. This seven here is the weight to go from uh, two to five. From two uh, to five, you have a weight seven and so on. Okay. So we start with this and then uh, in the first iteration, what do we do? We update this uh, taking, on, taking into account uh, um, shortest paths uh, whose intermediate vertices uh, are at most one, which means uh, you either allow a straight edge or you allow to go through one. Okay, so what happens when you do this? So the entries that change in this matrix are uh, uh, four two and four five. Okay, so let's see what's happening. So um, four two is the uh, shortest path to go from four uh, to two. So at the beginning in the weight function, I had infinity here because I don't have an edge, okay? And now, however, I do have a path that uh, whose intermediate vertex is one, meaning is this path here, okay? So um, I'm taking that into account. So I do the minimum of infinity and three plus two. And so I get a five here. Other one that changed is the entry four, five. So uh, again, it used to be infinity. And now, however, I, I, I can do two plus minus four. 
so I have a minus two here. In the next iteration, we compute this superscript two. So now we allow for uh, uh, short spots whose intermediate vertices are at most two. So you can use either two or one at the intermediate uh, uh, vertex. The entries that change, that change are these ones here, this four, this five, and this 11. So this four is the way to go from one to four. One to four at the beginning, it was, in, uh, it was, uh, um, it was infinity. And now, however, um, you can uh, um, do uh, a three plus one. Another one that changed is this uh, uh, five here. This is the um, path to go from three to four. So uh, from three to four, I, I can now do uh, go to two and then go to one. And this 11 here is to go from three to five. Um, so now I can again, I can do a four plus a seven. Then we compute uh, D superscript three. The only entry that changes is this one here. Um, this is the path going from four uh, to two. From four to two, I can, I can now do uh, minus five plus four. So that's a minus one here. Next, we compute D superscript four. Here, many entries change. I'm just going to show you uh, one of them. Um, this three here, this is the um, shortest path to go from three to five. So from three to five. Um, used to be 11, but now um, we can do much better. We can do three because we can uh, uh, first go to uh, four with a path like this, which costs five. And then from four, we can do uh, two minus four. So the total cost will be uh, three. Okay, so this three here, is obtained by uh, this path that costs four plus one, and then this one that costs two minus four. And finally, we compute this superscript five. Again, multiple entries change. For example, uh, this entry here has changed. This is the uh, cost to go from uh, node one to two. Uh, we can now do a um, path that goes through five. So we go uh, to five. There is edge here, costs minus four. Then we can do uh, six minus five and four. So the cost is minus four plus six minus five plus four, uh, which would be just one here. And this concludes the example of Floyd, Floyd Warshall. Okay, we're going to see uh, one final algorithm for uh, all pairs shortest path and it's called uh, Johnson's algorithm. Okay, uh, first uh, uh, recall that uh, um, with uh, matrix multiplication and Floyd Warshall, you uh, can also handle negative weights. And if the weights are positive, however, uh, you can repeat Dijkstra v times. Okay, the time for doing that would be order of v square log v plus v e. Now this quantity here, if the graph is sparse, meaning that e is about v, is essentially v square, which is a lot better than v cube. Okay, so for sparse graphs, uh, just repeating Dijkstra v times is a lot better than doing matrix multiplication or Floyd Warshall. But the problem is that uh, um, Dijkstra needs to have positive weights. So what Johnson does is to match Dijkstra, but also allow for negative uh, weights. So it gets the best of both worlds. And it is uh, interesting for us also pedagogically because it mixes uh, a number of algorithms which we saw earlier in a clever way. The idea in Johnson's algorithm is to uh, reweight the edges so that the shortest paths don't change, but the weights are positive. The way it's done is as follows. You're going to add a new node S. 
and you're going to put a zero weight edges to all previous nodes in the graph. And then in this new graph, you're going to run the Bellman Ford algorithm to get the minimum distance from S and only from S, only from this source. With this uh, Bellman Ford, uh, what you get out is some distance function, which I'm going to call uh, BF for Bellman Ford uh, from S to X. Okay, you have all these distance functions, it's just an array of distances from S in this new graph, and you're going to use it to uh, reweight the weight function. So from W, which is your input, you're going to construct another weight function, W prime, which is defined as follows. The weight uh, of the edge from U to V in W prime is the previous weight of the edge UV plus the Bellman for distance of U minus the Bellman for distance at V. And it can be shown that uh, this preserves the shortest path. And moreover, W prime is always positive. Okay, by preserving the shortest path, uh, I mean that the paths that were shortest with respect to W um, are the same as those which are shorter with respect to W prime. And this, uh, uh, I can just say a um, couple of sentences about, about this. Uh, this is not too hard to see because um, uh, if you think of a shortest path which goes through multiple uh, edges, uh, these additional terms will uh, cancel out. The only ones that will remain are the one uh, at the beginning of the path and the one at the end of the path. So they don't depend on the actual path, but just on the start and end point. Okay? And so the shortest paths will remain the same. Now that everything is positive, W prime is positive, we can run Dijkstra V times, and you get the same time as Dijkstra as we remarked earlier. Okay, um, because um, at the beginning you're gonna pay VE to run Bellman Ford, okay? Uh, but, that this is, but this is comparable to the time that you're going to spend later to run Dijkstra B times, because Dijkstra B times will have a term of VE. Okay, let's see Johnson uh, uh, in action with an example. So here is a graph. We have uh, five nodes. We have edges which have weights. The weights can be negative. The first thing that we do is to add a new node S and we're going to put a zero weight edges to all previous nodes and so on. Then we're going to compute the Bellman for distance from this new node to all uh, nodes. Okay, and the distance here is shown inside the nodes. The distance to this node here is zero. The distance to this node here is minus one. Because, for example, I can do uh, zero here, um, four. This would uh, give me a distance of four, but I can, I can also do uh, zero to um, here, do a minus five, and then a four. So I get to minus one. And from this, then uh, we are going to uh, reweight. Re so we're going to use the, the Bellman for the distance um, to reweight. And here are uh, here are the the new weights in the graph. And then from this uh, we can run Dijkstra v times. So. Um, here I'm running Dijkstra from uh, this node and inside each node what's written is the minimum uh, distance uh, um, with respect to D prime, the reweighted uh, weights and the original minimum distance which is what we really cared about, this D. Okay? So you do it from this node, you get all of these, uh, these uh, values, this is going to be one array of your final, final output matrix. Uh, then you do it from this node here, again you run Dijkstra, here you always have zero because uh, from one node to itself uh, uh, is zero distance. 
uh, and so on. Okay, so for example, uh, right, this uh, if you start from here, then uh, in the original distance, uh, uh, in the original weights, the distance is six. With the new weights, the distance is two here. And this concludes um, our discussion of all pairs shortest paths.